in the bowl, in the big mixing bowl right there, uh, is what looks like dough. That's the, that's the sponge. So that's actually the starter uh, for the baguettes. Now, uh, yeasted starters, because you're starting from, you, you, don't, have, you don't have that natural starter that, that you're carrying over from generation to generation. Uh, you're, you're kind of starting from scratch in terms of fermentation and, and building flavor. So yeasted starters go for a much longer time. They sit for a much longer time than natural starters do. So we're making that now. Um, it will sit and ferment for um, four hours out, out here at, at, in this room, and, uh, which is at a 73 degrees all the time. And the dough itself is at 70, the starter itself is at 73 degrees. And then it will actually go into the refrigerator for another uh, about 15 hours before it gets used in the, in the dough the next day. And for all of that dough, uh, all of that starter that's there, there's pounds in there, probably, yeah, 250 or 275 pounds, there's about uh, a few ounces of yeast in there, three or four ounces if I was, yeah. so it's very, it, and, and after four hours, it's just barely started to, started to rise, and then it finishes it off, it, it, it finishes its process in the cooler. And as I said earlier, colder temperature encourages acetic acid, um, which in my, my feeling is that, that that builds more flavor into a, into a natural starter. I don't like to encourage that extra acetic acid. That's what's going on right here. Uh, the potatoes are getting ra weighed out for our uh, potato bread. Those, of course, the, the previous to uh, being able, before we were able to get much in the way of grains from uh, Vermont farmers, potatoes were one thing that, that I, that we, we've been putting in bread since the beginning uh, in our one potato bread. Uh, we've been getting those from Footbrook Farm, Yukon Gold Potatoes, uh, and he, he grows them and stores them for us and, and has done a great job uh, keeping them from, from sprouting all the way right till the, till the next time. They're month. down there, they're, um, they're making the baguettes, um, which is a, a sort of a, a two or two stage process there, the, dividing them um, with a divider that, that takes a, a pre-weighed amount of dough and divides it quickly into 24 equal pieces without squishing too much air out of it. And then um, we do have, this is the one place for, for baguettes because they're, they're a pretty labor intensive thing to make and about half of our, uh, to make by hand, and about half of our production units wise on a daily basis is baguettes. Uh, we have a machine. The schedule, our schedule, because we're making anywhere from 1,500 to 3,000 loaves a day, our schedule here is, uh, it, and most of these are going to stores and restaurants. We start uh, mixing the dough in the morning uh, and those are all the naturally leavened ones, and they uh, ferment for about four hours. Uh, and then at 11 o'clock, we have people people start to to uh, hand form the those loaves of bread, and then uh, those will rise for several hours more. And at 4:30 p.m., people come in uh, and start putting bread into the oven, and they're doing that pretty much all night long. And then there's time for the bread to cool and get packed up, and uh, and be ready for the to hit the road at five in the morning when the when it, we go to the stores and restaurants. So we're sort of a answer to the question about the uh, the pattern on the loaf is right here, um, and that's connected to your other question about uh, how are those uh, what you say were they baked on that? If they're yeah, yeah no. So what happens is there are two different methods that we use for. Uh, Holding the holding the breads up so that they, they maintain their shape while they're rising they're in their final rise, and uh, one is with these, which is called a brat form. This is a German uh, cane basket made specifically for proofing proofing bread in, and uh, so it, it it rises upside down there, uh, and then and and one of the reasons for that is that 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 will keep it from drying out on the on the surface of it. Uh, and it's okay if it dries a little bit here because what happens uh, on what is to be the bottom because you flip it out and then it won't stick uh, to the hearth because these, these breads are all baked directly on the stone hearth. And Just moving over that way, that, that are, uh, they're, like, they're like some kind of sophisticated paper mache. They're, they're also made in Germany and they're, uh, they're uh, wood chips uh, that are just like pressed together and they seem quite durable. 
uh, and then they have a little pattern on them, which not only makes a pat, you know, is there for making the pattern, but it will stick less if it has some texture to it. You know? uh, so this or, or the linen. Um, you know, I mentioned earlier about about uh, the beginnings of bread baking. The other thing, of course, is the oven. Uh, and uh, you know, I like I like to refer to this as, as a modern version of the of the the first types of ovens that that bread was baked on. Uh, beneath all that steel, there's uh, a whole lot, several tons of uh, of brick and and refractory concrete, and um, it's all in an effort to create enough thermal mass so that when you put the loaves on the baking surface, uh, they'll uh, they'll spring. Uh, they, they, the baking surface won't cool down. That's what happened. They just put some put some bread directly onto the uh, onto the hearth. And as with uh, Dave Hartshorn's uh, more primitive version of the same thing, that the the principle is is the same um, in a hearth oven. The heat is hot. The air is not moving uh, in any significant way, like it would be in a convection oven. And so you get a natural contrast uh, as you get to you know if the loaf flares at all, it gets it gets darker. That's something we want. We want that that variability in the in the crust color because the heat is more intense towards the outsides towards the top and the sides of the of the oven um, same question yeah there's a uh, there's steam added to the to the oven this there are down each side of this is like four ovens stacked on top of each other um, so down the side each side of each deck uh, as we refer to it, but with their, their really like distinct ovens, there is uh, a whole bunch of cast iron in a trough, and then a pipe with little holes in it that um, that when we when we just hit a button, it sprays water onto the, the cast iron to create a 100% humidity environment for the first few minutes that the bread is being baked. In a um, in a well sealed brick oven, you know, like the one I just described at Elmore Mountain. Uh, they actually, it's so well sealed that the bread will, will steam itself. Uh, so this one, because we're opening it uh, and more frequently, and I, I think really because it's, it's made with, with a lot of steel in there as well to, to create each chamber, it's just not sealed well enough for the bread to, to steam itself so well. But obviously the bread gives off a lot of moisture. Uh, so, so you just heard he just steamed it and it kind of ripped out there. Um, and this apparatus here is a, is a loader that just makes it easy for us to get all the bread in at once. It's obviously efficient, but um, it's also a, a way of assuring that they're all spaced evenly, which means that they'll bake at the same rate. Yeah, the, the purpose of the moisture is to actually gelatinize the, uh, the starches on the crust, and so it, it uh, caramelizes more readily. It really colors up entirely differently when it's when it's steamed. Just color or is it color or is it color? It's, it's, a, it's the texture also. Well, it's interesting, actually. It makes it chewier. Um, if you don't steam it, if we forget to steam it, it's more, it, it's actually a little thicker and and um, and harder uh, in, a, in a strange way. It, you know, if, if we forget to, to steam it, we it uh, doesn't have nearly the, the caramelization. Uh, it gets to be this kind of hard, not very sweet uh, thing. It uh, and then also the loaves are are constricted. They so it, it actually affects the interior when you when you forget to steam it. That's also one of the reasons they cut it. Yeah. Uh, we sell this to schools, did you say? We make now because of the new regulations. We started making a, a bread specifically for the schools that is 60% um, the the bolted flour. We sort of. I actually talked to the USDA about those regulations, and 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 they, I explained the whole bolted thing, and they they got it. Yeah. To their credit, they said, okay, yeah, that makes sense. That you know that'll because the the deal was 50% whole grain, right. and I said, well, this has zero percent whole grain, but you know the thing I said earlier about, right. but actually more, uh, nutri yeah. yeah, and so at a rate of 60%, it's like getting at least you're getting everything you would if you had 50% whole wheat plus all the germ. Right. And they went for that. So that's what we make now for the schools. Uh, is it's a particular bread that uses the same starter that I just showed you. 
Um, and it's a very similar formula to the sour sprinkle. It just has more of the bolted weights and ways of methods and all of that kind of thing. Um, and I'm giving you this teeny little bit because, as I said, uh, you should add, you know, you should, you should uh, increase that by five times. And I also didn't completely seal that. Are you taking this? Great. Uh, I didn't completely seal that because it's, uh, it would blow its lid uh, if, it was, if it was sealed. So you wanted to breathe a little bit there. <laughs>